Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus freaking gamer here. Ah, uh, my heart's heavy going into this one. It's the Sunday sermon, so, and I feel like the message is very timely, very important. And I want to put this disclaimer out at the beginning of this video. Um, this was primarily inspired by the death and the shooting of Christina Grimmie. Um, I did not monetize yesterday's video because that was specifically for her, that was devoted to her. So will be the song tribute that comes out later on this week. This sermon, however, will be monetized as normal because this message doesn't just apply to her death and the other shootings that I'm gonna reference. This message applies to all people of all times, regardless of shootings, because death is something we're all gonna face at some time or another. So, as per my usual Sunday message, this sermon will be monetized, and in all proceeds, which will be pretty much zero, since I'm an incredibly small channel, if there were any, would go to me. Hopefully that will not offend anyone. If it does, I don't believe I'm in the wrong, and I want to explain that to y'all and how that would work, just so there wouldn't be any questions when you see ads on this video. So with that disclaimer out, I will proceed. Um, Christina Grimmie's death just made me really reflect on life as a whole and life in general. I preached about, well, actually, I, I have the link here. I'll just uh, and I'll put it. I'll put it um, in the in the um, link down below. But I recently preached just last month. Um, we're all dying, May the second, uh, last month. That we're all dying, and duh, we are all dying. But there's a timeliness to that message now, and. If anything from that message is reiterated here, that's okay, because this message is more pertinent now than ever. Um, and just a day after Christina Grimmie's shooting, there was another shooting also in Orlando, Florida at a gay nightclub. And it's the biggest... It's the biggest mass shooting in American history, period. 50 people at the bare minimum have died from that shooting. And that is a tragedy. It is terrible. It's not acceptable. And so all of this in a matter of days. All of this in a matter of days. And it brings to my mind memories of, you know, Columbine. I, I lived through that. I was around at the time that happened. I actually saw, I still remember um, at the time of the Twin Towers, I remember I was watching a Dragon Ball Z VHS. And that, those, are, those were really old, really old um, tapes that you watched movies on before DVDs existed. That's how old I am. And I was just going to plug in one of those and watch some Dragon Ball Z. When I turned on the TV, I saw one of the towers smoking and the other tower hadn't been hit, and I was wondering what was going on, and then I actually saw the other tower get hit. And then there was the shooting, the church shooting um, in Charleston, South Carolina, that happened last year, where some white supremacy guy went in and said, I came here to kill black people, and he did just that. A world full of violence, a world full of death, a world full of chaos, tragedy, and despair. Things that I want to address on this channel. Things I want to address in my preaching. Things I want to address with my life. With the words and with the breath that God gives me, I want to address these horrible topics. I don't want to ignore them. I don't want to toss them to the side. I don't just want to play video games, kick back, and pretend none of these other things happen. Now, I'm not bashing anyone who only plays video games on their YouTube channel. On their YouTube channel, they can do whatever they want. I know, and I'm sure if they heard about these things, that they would also be on some level grieving inside. Um, anyone who hears stuff like this, it's just, it, it's devastating to hear. It's painful to hear. It's terrible to hear. And I don't want my channel to just focus on video games. I want to focus on not just entertainment. I want to focus on actual life lessons, things that can improve the world around me, things that can not just spread joy and cheer and a few laughs. I want to spread truth. I want to spread genuine change. And I believe the teachings of the Bible and the teachings of Jesus Christ can do that. And the issue where I'm facing once again today is the issue of death. Something that's hit 
really big the last few days. The verse that I'm going to come at you with is Luke chapter 13, and we're going to start at verse 1. And that'll be, I don't need it, just like I covered in my uh, we're all dying message, you know, I don't, need, I don't need a Bible verse to tell you that we're all dying, you know. I would need a Bible verse to tell you that anyone can skip out on death, like Enoch and Elijah. Uh, and those two men did skip out on death. You can Google those names. Um, pretty famous big dudes in the Bible who did not physically die. But that doesn't apply to the vast majority of human beings. Um, in fact, if you're not a believer in Christ, you would say, and actually most Christians, without really thinking about those two particular examples, would say, you know, 100% of humans die. The only two things certain in this life are death and taxes. So I don't need any biblical verses to prove to you that we're dying. But I want to talk about the issue of death and tragic death and the suddenness of death and right now considering what has happened in the last few days it seems to me very important to reiterate a lot of the points from that message and to say it a little bit stronger Luke chapter 13 verse 1 there were present at that season some who told him Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices so Pilate the um the ruler of Judea at that time had killed some people and mingled it in with the sacrifices that the Jews were offering. So he just butchered some people. And why? Just because, because he was the ruler of that area, the Roman ruler, and he could do that. If there was a reason behind it, historically that's mentioned by Josephus or someone, I don't know. Verse 2, And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And the reason Jesus... There, there are two main points that I want to bring up here. You know, were they worse sinners than anyone else there? No, they were not. Guys... It's not just bad people who die in this world, and you know that as well as me. But there's not some magic algorithm to where if you do a certain action or a certain deed, or a lack of a certain deed or a certain action, that you will somehow live and prosper and be happy and do good. There's no magic algorithm. Um, you know, just to give a big example here, you know, um, some man goes into a church and shoots a bunch of Christians, and then some, uh, so, from what I've read in the earliest police reports, or the, I should say the news reports, not the police reports, in the earliest news reports, some Muslim went in and shot a bunch of gay people um, just either today or yesterday. Um, it, so it doesn't matter what religion you are, it doesn't matter what you believe, it doesn't matter what lifestyle you live or what actions you do, different people with different beliefs, assault different people with different beliefs. Plain and simple as that. There, there is no... And another, uh, just another, this is a story from farther back in the past. Um, it was, if I, I Google behind me and check the history on this. This is the history that I read in John Calvin's town, the one that he ruled over at the time of the Protestant Reformation. Now, John Calvin, he authored, or well, he didn't author really, he rather reiterated the Augustinian um, stance on Calvinism. It's named after him because he popularized it, where basically people are predestined to go to heaven and people are predestined to go to hell. Um, he was a big thinker in the Reformation. He, it was a very big deal to him that people you know, know Jesus and that they walk away from the Catholic Church. And he killed someone who denied the existence of God, the deity of Jesus, the virgin birth of Jesus, the Trinity, the resurrection. From all accounts, an atheist, he put that person to death for denying those core doctrines. So a Christian killed, from what I can tell, an atheist because he believed something counter and contrary to what the Christian believed. Then you have in the 20th century where... Um, Stalin and communist uh, USSR put to death several people of a lot of different religions. I think the majority was Christian because it was an atheist regime who wanted to get rid of religion.
because atheism is one of the foundations of communism. So it really doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what you do. Someone's out to get you. Someone will want to take your life. There's no rhyme or reason behind it. Were those people, were those Galileans, were those men that died at the tower and still alone, were they any more sinful than anyone else? Jesus said no. I would extend that example to pretty much everyone that I just mentioned. And as a Christian, I do want to throw in, yes, this includes the people who died at the gay bar just yesterday, that they were not somehow worse sinners than anyone else out there just because they were gay. I will say in this video, just briefly, I don't agree with homosexuality. I do believe it is a sin. But I want to quickly add what happened to them was wrong. The killer wasn't justified because of his faith, because of the sinfulness of homosexuality. The, and that leads right into the second point. Jesus said, unless you repent, you will all surely perish. The bottom line of what Jesus had to say there is that we are all sinners. We're all sinners. We've all sinned. We've all done something wrong. It doesn't justify what the, what the Muslim shooter did at the gay bar. It doesn't justify what John Calvin did to the atheist. Even though John Calvin was the official law of the time. My gosh, if you think someone's going to burn in hell when they die, why in the world would you go out of your way to kill them and send them there? You want them to repent. You want to give them a chance to repent. You want to give them a... If they're not an overt threat to society, if they're not torturing and butchering people, why in the world would you go out of your way to kill them? Wouldn't you want them to come to Jesus and repent of their sins and have a great testimony for the church? It, it makes no sense to me. It makes absolutely... I don't care what legal jurisdiction that John Calvin had. In my mind and in my opinion, he had no right to kill that atheist. That's completely contrary to the ideals that Jesus set forth in the Bible, from what I can tell. Like I've said in so many of my videos, we're not here fighting a physical fight as Christians. We're here fighting a spiritual fight. We're fighting a fight against the rulers and principalities and the powers of the air. We're fighting a fight um, in, the, in the realm of ideas, in the realm of philosophy, in the realm of people's hearts and minds and thoughts. That's where our fights take place as believers in Christ. And the bottom line is we're, we're all sinners through and through in our hearts, minds, body, souls, and spirits. All of us are born sinners. We have all sinned against God. I'm not going to go into a, a great diatribe to explain how we're sinners, why we're sinners, and how that works together. It's an important message. And at some point in the future, I'm sure I'll cover it. But right now... I think it suffice it to say, all of us know we've done things that are wrong. All of us have done things that, you know, regardless of your faith or religion, you would consider, if you were to look into your own heart and mind, you would look in the past, you would look at your past actions and say, you know what, I've done some things that are bad. Whether you're some small little type watching this and you just, you took a piece of candy that your parents told you not to do, or your parents told you not to touch something, you touched it anyway because, forget your parents, you want to do what you want to do. And that was bad. That was wrong. For those of us who are older, all I've got to say, uh, just, you know, the looks that we give to the opposite sex. Uh, a lot of those looks and the thoughts that follow after them are very wrong, very selfish, very possessive and greedy. Um, and I can probably just stop there. And I don't even need to go into the horrendous acts that have been perpetuated by individuals in recent days. I think everyone of every religious stripe and creed all the way down to the atheists would agree that this is terrible and wrong. But we're all sinners. And we're all going to perish. We're all going to die one day. And guys, the, what separates this message from the we're all dying message is the, the forcefulness I want to put into this. Not only are we all going to die, we don't know when we're going to die. We don't know when our time is. Christina Grimmie didn't go to that concert thinking, you know what? I'm probably going to, I don't know what religion she stood for, so I don't know what she was thinking. I'm just using this as an example. But you know what? After tonight's concert, I'm going to stand before God tonight, and I'm going to have to give an account of my life. I could be wrong. Maybe she was thinking that. 
But she probably wasn't thinking, you know, this is my last night on earth. The people who were going into that gay nightclub were probably just thinking, hey, I'm going to find someone to spend the night with. I'm just going to come in, have a few drinks, and have a good time. They weren't thinking, tonight I'm going to meet my maker. Tonight some crazed gunman's going to come in and hose a lot of us down. They weren't going in there prepared for that. They weren't going in there expecting that. Just like I'm not expecting to keel over from a heart attack or a stroke after this message. Just like you're not expecting to, you know, drive home after watching this video on your cell phone. And on the way home, some drunk driver is coming by and he comes into your lane and you don't have time to react and it's a head-on collision, both of you going, you know, over 40 miles an hour. None of us are expecting that or anticipating that. I hope I don't get a heart attack and die. I personally hope you don't get in a car accident on the way home after watching this on your phone. I hope that doesn't happen, but we don't know. We don't know when that time is. What we do know is that we're all going to die. And what we can also infer from the examples I've given is that regardless of what you think and what you do, someone is out to get you. Someone doesn't like you. And some people, you know, look at the, some of the serial murders in the past. There wasn't a logical rhyme or reason. Those people were literally just having fun. So the people who do nothing, the people who try their best to stand not out, that was good English. Um, the people who try, to, are, who try to be nobodies, the people who wish to remain alone and anonymous and have solitude and enjoy peace and quiet, even you're not completely safe. Someone out there wants to wreck your life just for their own personal five minutes of pleasure and indulgence. No one is safe. Not perfectly. And we have all sinned. We've all done things that are wrong. And it's because of that sin, the Bible tells us, that we're all going to die. The Bible also says, uh, let me just turn to it. To, I've memorized this, but I want to I just want to read it right out of here. It's Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us. And then go over to 6:23. For the wages of sin is death. I'm gonna put I'm gonna read the rest of that in just a second, but I just want to let that sink in. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. The reason everyone dies is because of sin. Everyone is born a sinner. We've all done things that are wrong. And because of that sin, death is coming. We can be killed. We can die. And we don't know when that's going to happen with all the craziness that's in this world. And now there's, I want to throw in, now's the time for the hope. Now's the time to throw in the good news in the middle of all this insanity. There's, it helps me, keep me sane throughout the day. Even thinking about just, I expressed this yesterday a little bit in the video, just I want to be on YouTube. I want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to spread laughs and cheer. I also want to spread the news that Jesus Christ came to forgive sin, that life can be changed. I want to address some things that are sinful and that are wrong. And I want to hopefully turn some lives around and give people the hope that I was given through Jesus. But I don't know if I'm, you know, and I also want to at some point start doing songs and covers on YouTube and maybe get some, a little bit more YouTube fame that way and get some more attention and, you know, pursue a livelihood in some various career or some kind of sense. And who knows what the future will hold. And I want, I want to pursue those dreams. I'm going to pursue those dreams. And in doing so, some people may get upset. They may not like me. They may not like my talking about Jesus so much. They may not like the songs that I sing. And even if it wasn't about Jesus, someone out there, just for the fun of it, just to ruin my life, if they had the chance, would probably want to take my life. Just because they could. But since I am a Christian, since I am saying what's right and what's wrong in this world, that just gives a few more people a reason to want to kill me and come against me. And here's the part that keeps me sane, that gives me hope, and I want it to give you hope too. It's the end of verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is a chance of heaven 
of being with God forever, literally eternal life, life unending, life everlasting, a life that can't be taken away from us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus came to this world, He died on a cross, shedding His blood so all of our sins could be forgiven, and then He rose again three days later. That's the good news. We're all sinners. We're all going to die. and We don't know when death is coming, but we can be ready for death. We can be ready for that time when we cross from this side to the other and we stand before God and give an account of our lives. We can be ready for that time by knowing Jesus Christ, by believing that He died on the cross for our sins and that He rose again three days later. And to all my freaks who have subscribed, and to all the non-freaks who have watched the video this far, thank you for watching. I want to extend to you right now that offer of eternal life in Jesus Christ. If you will believe the things that I just said, if you will accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He will save you, and He will guarantee you eternal life. I'm not promising you that you won't die. On the contrary, I'm promising you unless you're Enoch or Elijah or something like that, you are going to die. It's pretty much a guarantee. But this life isn't the end. There's more. And there's hope. There is hope. There's forgiveness. And there's a second chance in Jesus. And that's what I want to present to you guys tonight. And if you want a prayer to like follow, like I've, I've given you the information, if you want like a model prayer to follow, then pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. And I know that at some point I'm going to die and I'm going to stand before you and I, I'm guilty. And I can't do this on my own. I can't do something to earn your love. I can't do something to be forgiven. But I do believe that you died on the cross to forgive my sins. And I believe you rose again three days later. And I believe in this promise of eternal life that I've heard. And I want that, Jesus. Please come into my life. Please forgive my sin. Please save me. Please be my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And if you just prayed that, congratulations. You have passed from death into life. And the moment you do die, when you do stand before God... It's not that you haven't ever sinned, and it's not that you're no longer going to have any temptations, but all of those things are forgiven and can be forgiven because you've turned to Jesus. You've turned to the one who can forgive you. You've turned to the one who loved you enough to die for you, so all of those sins are now taken care of, and they're under the blood of Jesus, and you are a new person. You're a new creation, and when you do die, you have all of eternity to be with God, to be in heaven, and to be with Him, and to love Him forever and ever and ever. So please uh, please uh, find a Bible, read it every day. Make sure you find a group of like-minded people who also believe in Jesus, a church that worship Jesus Christ as God, believes that He died on the cross and rose again. And talk to God every day. Pray to Him. Ask Him, you know, just... Ask Him for whatever it is you need. Ask Him for whatever it is your friends need. Ask Him to help you share this good news that you've gotten with other people who also need to hear it, who also need to be saved. And to those of you who stuck around, you're not quite convinced of Jesus. You're not quite convinced of this whole eternal life thing. Maybe you're not even convinced you're a sinner. I would simply say... I can't make you believe anything, and I wouldn't want to make you believe the way I believe. Like, I want you to be convinced of your own free will, of your own heart and mind. I want you to believe what I say because you think it's true. I wouldn't want to force that on you. Um, I would love to discuss it with you. I'd love to talk to you about it. Don't want to push it on you. What I, the idea I want to push, and I think this is, I don't think anyone can really logically argue this is that all of our time down here, even if you live to be 120 years, our time down here is amazingly short. And we also don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Like I said earlier, I don't know what's going to happen to my body tonight. And you don't know what's going to happen to you tonight. You don't know who's going to step into the bar that you're in. You don't know what maniac's going to be driving on your way home. You don't even know what your own body's going to do to you. 
you know, for the rest of the day after you watch this video. You don't know. So what I've said about Jesus, I mean, if you decide no, Christianity is wrong, I understand, and that's cool. A lot of Christians probably don't want me to say it that way, and I'm not, and I will say you do need to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. It is very important. It's a literally heaven or hell decision, but it's your call. If you decide Christianity is wrong, that's cool. I will respect that if you have a reason for it. But if you're just like, eh, forget it. I've got time. No, you don't. You do not have time. You're not guaranteed your next breath or your next heartbeat. You're not guaranteed to make it through the night. This isn't a decision to take lightly, and it's not a decision to put off till later. If you haven't made a decision for Jesus or against him, if you're riding the fence, make up your mind. Think careful on the, carefully on these things because you don't know when your time is. You don't know how much time you have left. That's not in our hands. That's not within our power regardless of what faith you are or what you believe. And if you are an atheist, then you should believe in random chance a lot more than I do. And you don't know when your time is up. If you've made your decision against Jesus, okay. I'll still ask you to rethink it and consider some of the arguments that I and other Christians have presented. And if you're riding on the fence and you don't have any reason at all to say yes or no, please think on this. Please make up your mind. Please don't delay because if you do delay, it might be too late. And if I'm right about Jesus being Lord and about you being a sinner, then you're in for a whole new world of pain if you die without him having known the truth. Thank you guys very much. I know this was a bit of a heavy subject, but... I really felt compelled by the Lord and just in my own heart and mind to cover this the, with current events the way they are. This is not a time to delay. This is not a time to sit on the fence. This is not a time to pitter-patter around the subject. I just want to go in it with both barrels blazing. I just want to go for it. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love all of you guys, Christian and non-Christian alike, straight and gay alike. I love every single one of you guys, and God bless.